Well, Paul, how do you respond to that? <laughs> You've made my, my first task on, uh, on this sitting day very difficult indeed, but I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging on the behalf of the Government of Australia, recommit to the implementation of the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. And I thank you, Paul and Annie Matilda, for the wonderful welcome to country and honouring us with your presence here. Uh, I acknowledge Peter Dutton, the Leader of the Opposition. I acknowledge other members and senators who are here, but in particular, I acknowledge the record number of First Nations people who've been elected to represent uh, their local constituencies in the House of Representatives and the Senate. It is a very good thing involved. As Paul was recounting the heroes of reconciliation uh, going back uh, since, uh, really, since uh, uh, people walked to the opening of Parliament down the road here, the old Parliament in 1927, the temporary one, but going through the history of struggle, uh, it strikes me that with every one of those historical events, uh, there is no one in this room, and I doubt whether there's anyone in Australia, who would say, gee, I wish that hadn't have happened. I wish that person hadn't have walked that journey. And here in today's ceremony, I'm reminded, as I walked here, that as Leader of the House of Representatives in 2008 with the incoming government, we were told that this ceremony originally couldn't take place because there was nothing in the standing orders to provide for it. And we went ahead and we did it. And today you have, I'm sure, uh, every member of the House of Reps and Senate across the political spectrum who can be here is here. We have record numbers of the public are here, and no one says that shouldn't have happened. When Kevin Rudd delivered the apology, some said that that also shouldn't have happened. But there's no one today says that that did anything other than bring our nation together, that it was a unifying moment that was important not just for the stolen generations, not just for First Nations people. It was important for our nation. It was a moment. And we in this parliament and as leaders of this country have another moment before us. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is a generous offer. Generous. It's a handout just saying, please, Hold it, hold it. That's, that's all people are asking for. Uh, where I was raised, I was raised, my mum was very strong about manners. And the Uluru Statement from the Heart is to my mind, just should be seen as good manners. That when you have issues that are affecting people, particularly uh, people who have a history going back 65,000 years at least, the oldest continuous civilization on the planet, a source of great national pride here in Australia. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you grasp that generous and gracious offer, which is about reconciliation, which is about acknowledging dispossession and colonisation and all of the tragedy and injustice that occurred to First Nations people as a result of the First Fleet arriving in 1788. Now, I know that Australians, in the way that they deal with their lives, are generous. 
towards their neighbours, uh, towards their community, and towards the whole country. We've seen that, and we see it replicated by the fact that people are wearing masks here today. People making decisions to look after each other, to look after the community. That's what we've seen. What the Uluru Statement from the Heart represents is an opportunity that must be seized. Because if it isn't seized, it will be lost and we will be diminished. We have to seize that opportunity and we need to seize it in this term. Because it's now more than five years since Indigenous people came together with those remarkable words that say so much. It's not easy sometimes to bring together this parliament. It's not easy to bring together First Nations people with a common view either. But that hard work was done, was done. And voice, truth, treaty is the result. And we need to seize that opportunity because the uncomfortable truth of our history uh, isn't something that, uh, you know, is about blame. It is about, though, just acknowledging reality and what has occurred. And the great thing about the Uluru Statement from the Heart is that it doesn't uh, seek to, to do that. It's not a negative statement. It, it's incredibly positive in the way uh, that it advances. And we've seen that, I think it's no accident either, that since 2008, uh, we have seen such the record number of First Nations people uh, represented here. Six members alone in my caucus, but members of the coalition, members of the crossbench, members of the Greens party. Um, there has been that change occur and that should be celebrated, celebrated. So I say to everyone here, all of my uh, parliamentary colleagues, don't miss the chance, because you're not here for that long, none of us will be. And when you're sitting on the porch, thinking about what you did, you can either have a source of pride or a source of regret. No middle path. No middle path. Make it a source of pride. And <laughs> and we're not talking about, you know, ancient history here. Uh, how good is it that in the last parliament, uh, we had uh, the Honourable Ken Wyatt, an Indigenous man, uh, representing uh, the parliament as the Minister for Indigenous Affairs. And now we have in the new government, Linda Burney, representing the Minister for, being the Minister for Indigenous Affairs. Linda Burney's story underlines not just how repugnant the days of legalised discrimination were, but how recent and how raw the wounds of our past still are. But her story does also remind us of the significant changes that have occurred um, just in my lifetime. In my lifetime, the 1967 referendum, the Mabo decision, the national apology, the welcome to country to mark the opening of parliament a testament to all those who work so hard to awaken our national conscience, a testament to the courage and perseverance of First Nations leader, and that history inspires us uh, to further progress. Uh, Linda is a very dear friend of mine, and uh, there's no one I'm closer to in, in this show. And, and in part, her, her story um, inspires me, because if, if, uh, if, if my beginnings 
and, uh, and life had dealt with that hardship, you, you'd like to think you'd respond with generosity and kindness. But gee, you wouldn't blame someone for not doing that. And, and that's what strikes me about uh, reconciliation and going forward. Matilda gave the first welcome to country ceremony here at this Parliament House. And she said this, for thousands of years, our people have observed this protocol. It is a good and honest and a decent and human act to reach out and make sure everyone has a place and is welcome. It says a lot. May the humility and hope infused in her remarkable words be what guides us in the 47th Parliament.